already because you are the session leader again <laughs> for our next session and we are trying to break the barriers between health and health and social care and yeah our next keynote speaker Mr. Dafulas is the clinical research fellow at the University of Thessaly and part of the city's net municipality agency for central Greece and his keynote will focus on the digital transformation of health and assistance services as a catalyst for the provision of integrated care and the lesson learned from the digital cities of central Greece. As of 2008, 10 municipalities of central Greece joined forces to formulate a digital municipal community and Mr. Dafulos will uh, now elaborate on the work of this community. Go ahead. Can we have 20 on the clock? Thank you. Yeah, so nice to meet you in person. Uh, my colleague Christina Caraberi from Itricala, you have met some of you already in previous meetings. She's already a major city's alumna. <laughs> uh, but me, this is my first meeting and it's exciting that it's in the city I'm based. I, I was born in Trikala. I, I studied medicine in, in Thessaloniki. I did my residency in Athens. And the last two years I'm uh, based in the university hospital here. Um, so, and, but the last 10 years, this is what I'm going to talk about, is I'm going to talk about, about the digital transformation of the municipal uh, healthcare services uh, with the three different platforms, uh, starting from the 4G, 3G, uh, now it's standard, uh, then it was uh, Pioneer. Um, now, we just completed the IoT pilot and now we run the machine learning artificial intelligence pilot for chronic disease management. All these are national pilots and I will focus mostly on the lessons learned, uh, take home messages for, for you. Uh, so the topic, the, the objective of all these technology uh, trans digital transformation of the municipal health services is to provide holistic integrated care. This is the new trend in uh, health care uh, where uh, we try to, to, to deal with the patient not in episode manner. At the moment what we do is that we have an exacerbation of a patient, a chronic patient. Most of the patients are chronic nowadays. Uh, they go to the hospital, then another doctor takes care, then another nurse takes care, the municipal service takes care, and every, everything is an episode. It's not holistic, it's not comprehensive, it's not integrated with each other, and it's, there are many challenges of this, and this is the, the new trend in the health care. Uh, there are many challenges and many factors you have to consider when you, you want to provide integrated care, organizational, functional, service, clinical. I will not focus, this is not the topic of my... Uh, speech and many stakeholders involved, the provider, the patient, the care professional, the evaluator, the, the payer, the politics. You can imagine the, how complicated it becomes. So there are many models, framework, li f theoretical frameworks, how to do this. Uh, um, so one of the most uh, known and the, one of the most uh, used is the chronic care model from uh, Dr. Wagner from US. And uh, in most, that was common in all these models is that ICT, information communication technology, is a, a pillar and a catalyst to implement this. So uh, there are cases across Europe that are pioneer, like Scotland. Even legally, they have they are obliged the municipalities to work with the NHS in Scotland. There is a law that was passed some years ago. Also, some uh, Benelux uh, regions, not all of them, some Nordic regions, some Spanish regions, some Italian regions, and as you can see, there are the, the countries where regional authorities are more powerful. In, in countries like, Greeks, like, like Greece, where we have the NHS, or, or Central England, where they have the NHS very powerful, it's not so common to have integrated care because uh, the, there are silos, organizational silos be between the municipalities and the healthcare services. So what we did, uh, and that was one of the key success stories of the take-home message, is that we, we, we focused, we, we, we made a, a company, it's a company that belongs to the 10 municipalities of the region, that was able to attract large-scale pilots from the EU, get the funding and make the pioneer services for the health system. And this is how we succeeded to, to become pioneers in this, because this, we had this flexibility of the, of the company. 
and uh, I will focus on the healthcare. There are many success stories on other smart city services, uh, but my focus is healthcare. So, if you either you provide care services on the one side or health services on the other side, ICT tries to complement and uh, and help you in this provision by uh, maximizing the, the patient um, service uh, um, scenarios and uh, supports. You can see here the first platform that was 10 years old. That was at that time it was the national pilot uh, for uh, for Greece and the, across Europe with the Renewing Health project. There was a mobile health platform, uh, 4G or 3G, depending on the region uh, focus. There are many point of care testing, as we call it, many Bluetooth uh, uh, measurements from uh, for of the patient that was sent through a mobile phone and then to the doctor. That is the old fashioned. Uh, now it's standard, but that, uh, but already old-fashioned for as, 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 as far as innovative thing is 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 uh, is, uh, the to is a concern. And smart care, Christina, my colleague, was responsible for that. Was try to implement this in a in a care model integrated one between the social services and the health services. Uh, but now we have the new technologies, the the, for the, the health industrial revolution, where we don't have any more 3G or 4G. Now the new hot topic is 5G, IoT, machine learning, AI, big data, all these topics. So all these technologies that are now standard will become obsolete some, in some years. And that's why the Commission, since they, it's a, we have a public health funded systems in Europe, it's not like US, they try to, they have to run another pilot, large-scale pilot, before it becomes an everyday practice in the next, uh, in the, at the end of this decade. So ActiveAge was the national, the, the European pilot of, of the, uh, more, with more than 7,000 users, with IoT uh, care services, and the Greek pilot for Central Greece. And uh, it was a big initiative from the EU, between the two policies, the Active and Healthy Aging and the IoT initiative, so, so, so two DGs of the EU, Co collaborated for this call, more than 20 million euros budget. Uh, five million was the contribution from the companies and the private equity entities and 20 from the commission. Dozens of partners, many countries involved. And uh, it, traveled, it, it tried to cover all type of care services, uh, from uh, uh, dementia to diabetes to chronic heart failure to um, Many, many types of diseases, because it, that was the objective, to become a pilot for the, for the future. And you can see different use cases, as we call it, the different scenarios we support with information technology. And many, uh, and it was divided per country and per region, depending on the priorities or the demographics of the, of the country. Uh, I will focus on the, for some examples, in Galicia, Spain, for example, it's one of the most known uh, uh, regions in Spain to have integrated care model. You can see here their platform with uh, independent living support. In Finland, one of the Nordic countries, uh, uh, it was another platform. In Italy, uh, Emilia Romana. And our model was to provide chronic care uh, uh, services uh, management uh, from home to the regional hospital where I'm based from, without them to have to come every, uh, every month to, to try to avoid their, their visits and try to avoid their exacerbation and episode care. Also, we had independent living support for people with early dementia or other problems, uh, moving uh, mostly uh, pro problems to, to move. Uh, and so there was, this is technical slides for technical conferences, but it was a very advanced uh, IoT services IT service, so it means that there, you, there is no use of mobile phone anymore. All these point of care testing devices, medical devices I saw you before in the previous generation are now connected directly to the internet. This is the internet of things. This is, is already in the market. It's going to become everyday uh, thing in uh, the end of the decade. And there was, we had already the evaluation. Uh, it was, it's, uh, it's already start published uh, in some papers. Uh, and it was a great satisfaction uh, indication uh, and indexes from uh, the users and the professionals. And the new pilot now that is already running and is going to be completed next year, to, uh, at end of 23, is about the AI. The problem with IoT devices is that they produce a huge ocean of data that it's not any more, the, the, the usual systems we had so far in the, in the care model with ICT platforms, we had 
cut-off points that uh, produce alarms. This is already obsolete and it's not, does, it cannot deal with this ocean of data. You need machine learning to, to, to deal with this data because otherwise the, the health professionals will become um, um, flooded with this data. So AI is required and this has to be again funded on, on large scale pilot in EU before EU decides to pay it with the structural funds by the end of the decade, the next, uh, uh, the next um, funding uh, era. So now we run this, this is already running in central Greece and in other pilots, eight regions across uh, seven EU countries. Again, about, uh, it was, the budget is about 20 something million, 22 million. And it's going to be, it was planned to, com to be completed in uh, March 23, but because of the COVID, it's going to be extended to end of 23. And huge uh, number of patients are recruited across the EU in many countries with different clinical scenarios and try to, we try to support them with IoT and machine learning. So it's a combination, it's the next step after ActiveAge. And in Greece, we try to support people with comorbidities and diabetes or when they are, when they are already sick or when they have unhealthy lifestyle in their 40s or their 50s, and they have metabolic syndrome, which is a very common syndrome in the Western societies, and to try to promote healthy lifestyle with the municipal services, with IoT devices, and special scenarios, machine learning to help them. So there is a platform with many point of care testing uh, devices and Fitbits and other lifestyle interventions that try to support this uh, healthy lifestyle. So this is the future. And this is the, what is coming. We're going to have hospital at home services. People are going to be discharged earlier than usual and it's going to be monitored at home with these machine learning algorithms and IoT services. And the new uh, uh, era in medicine is the digital diagnostic and digital therapeutics. So far we had uh, blood tests and all these tests you use in the hospital and you, are, you know you take your uh, lab test results, or going to have digital biomarkers. This is from New England Journal of Medicine publication two years ago. This is the future of medicine where we're going to have another type of uh, biomarkers, the digital biomarkers, and this will produce uh, uh, new uh, indexes for the, um, for the patients and the, and, the, and the health professionals. Of course, there are many challenges. It's a new, it's a new technology, new type of services, so there are protocols that have to be adapted, clinical protocols, clinical guidelines, the data protection issues, the, um, what is a medical device, what is not a medical device, cybersecurity, interoperability standards, liability, who is responsible for all these machine learning decisions, cost effectiveness, which of them are going to be paid by the public health systems, um, medical education for the health professionals, they have to be trained all over again in these new knowledge. And there are already some uh, um, some, uh, some frameworks you can use. The MAST model, for example, it was produced 10 years ago from the Commission, and it's free to use. You can use it to evaluate telemedicine services in your region. And if you want to, to scale up a service, I suggest Momentum. It was developed in 2015. Again, it's free to use. This, so these two frameworks, you can use them in your regions. It was produced by the EU. We, we already use them in large-scale pilots. And they, they can help you to evaluate or uh, develop a the such a service in your region. Uh, there is a big issue, of course, the reimbursement of all these mo mobile health services. These apps become medical devices. The pioneer country in, in, in Europe is the, is the German market. They have the DIGA regulation, uh, and they, have al al they already reimburse 30 type of mobile health services. For it, Brussels, uh, Belgium follows, uh, Italy, pioneer, not yet finished, and one more country, I think it's I think it's France, but I'm not sure. They, they had the an initiative, but Germany is now the most mature market that shows the, the way. Uh, of course, there are many challenges because there are hundreds of thousands of these devices, and most of them are lifestyle apps. They're not medical apps. So you have to make this discrimination, and this is a big issue. And uh, this, this, the, this, uh, the, the solution for this was the, the, the answer of the EU was the MDR, the new medical device regulation. We had the MDD, the Medical Device Directive, till two, two years ago. Now, with MDR, all health apps are classified class one when they have a medical scenario, or class 2A, 2B, or 3 when they are more medical uh, and more dangerous for the patient. But you have to make this discrimination before you, you buy something, otherwise your health professionals will not use them. And 
with AI, the legal framework was not clear. We have the AI Act, which is going to become a regulation by the end of 2023. Now it's in the parliament under debate. So there is, uh, there is tabula rasa there, as the Latin call it. So that's what was in short. I tried to shorten my, uh, my speech in order to have more time for discussion or, or because of the delay as well. And um, this is the control room in Tricala with the mayor um, where we, we run such services. And this is the, uh, the control room where we control the smart city services uh, in, uh, in central Greece. Thank you. Thank you. Please have a seat with us. Questions from yes. the floor. Yes. Do we have one with a microphone? Or I have already several here as well. So, yes, please. I think we have somebody. There was somebody before with a microphone. So, otherwise, we. Coming, coming. Zvi is coming. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Ah, this, this, is not on. Okay. this is not on. Thank you. Um, it is just a short uh, comment for you about uh, the topic you will uh, present. Um, if you want to know more information about uh, the technological aspect of uh, medical, I invite you to come to Israel and learn from the best uh, hospitals and uh, the clinics we have. Um, there is a last uh, innovation called Tito, not after the name of the Tito from Yugoslavia, but uh, it is uh, about this side and you have a direct contact to the doctor or to the hospital with I don't know how many um, checking in of information to uh, deliver to the doctor or to the hospital and get the immediate uh, solution or yeah, yes or yeah. Uh, Israel is the actually the most pioneer uh, health system in, the, in Europe, European region as we call it. It's a European economic area and uh, we have them in consortia as best practices. This is what's the role of Israel partners, Maccabi or Klalit. It's always the, the best practice and we follow their example. And I have a colleague in Technician and Technician is called the university. We were together in MIT and he became a professor at 40 years old. I'm a doctor <laughs> at this age, and, but in Israel he became, uh, we started to get, but he's already a professor. It's so advanced and so they help so much the um, innovation in Israel. It's a best case scenario, as you say. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah, we have one here already from the app. Um, with regard to the in-home monitoring, how was the issue of patient consent dealt with, particularly when the individuals might be frail or perhaps confused and not generally digital natives? Yes. It's, uh, in it, telemedicine in Greek, according to the Greek regulation, is considered like a surgery. Unless you write in, in you have an inf a written informed consent, it's not, you are not allowed to do telemedicine according to the Greek legislation. So it's something like an operation. Uh, so you need informed consent and uh, if you have people with early dementia or other mobilities you have to, p to perform uh, in the case report form as we call it in the trial you have to produce a mini mental for example test or something to, eval to validate his, li his uh, mild, st mild uh, early dementia status what is, whatever his stage is otherwise if he does, it does if he's above a threshold he's not allowed to sign the informed consent it's very tricky the telemedicine aspects in Greece we have very basic legislation thanks to the RRF we are, we are going to have legislation for telemedicine by in, in the next two years that's the good thing of the COVID <laughs> yeah. anybody else yes yes we have another lady no somebody's already moving Giorgio somebody's moving so all good <laughs> we're getting there he's coming he's coming he's coming Uh, 
Yes, all these devices that are validated that it's not experimental anymore, that they have a C mark according to the EU law or an FDA approval. There are about 600 devices, AI devices approved with FDA. I don't know the statistics for CE, for Europe. They are either they're classified as CAD systems or uh, CDSS systems. So CAD system is computer aid diagnosis. Clinical decision support system is the CDSS. So your device should have a C marked as CAD or CDSS. And then you know that you can use this to validate your alarms and try to stop this flood of know-how. So you have to ask for the, from your vendor such a C mark of CD, CDSS or CAD. No, the clinical protocols are not clear at all. Uh, there are clinical protocols for telemonitoring only for chronic heart failure and diabetes. No other disease has a protocol. So it's ad hoc by your hospital. They have to, to pass it from the institution review board, their protocol. There is no literature for this. But again, the protocol has to be based on these two systems, these two type of systems, and they are not more than 600 in the US. So in Europe, it will be less. And it's, most doctors don't know this. The, the, the average doctors don't know about this. It has never been taught in medical school. We are used to the standard biomedical devices where all these applications are practically, because it's only two years old, the legislation. So it's a big issue, the medical education, as I mentioned. Yeah. It's a new era, <laughs> a brave new era. Yeah. Anybody else from the floor? Do we have another one? Um, yeah, Giorgio, you wanted to step in? Yes, I have a question. You mentioned uh, that in many countries, like uh, Italy, for instance, the Medicare, the healthcare is managed by the region, while cities, municipalities are taking care of uh, social assistance. Now, uh, I cannot imagine, while maybe I'm wrong, I hope I'm wrong, the, uh, how the can, the cooperation can can work. I mean, it's uh, employees of the city are one thing, employees of the uh, um, medical employees and so on, they are another thing, and how this cooperation can work well. Is, is, there, a, is there any trick or technology to do that? There are only best case scenarios. It's a big discussion in the literature, in the management conferences. Scotland is the pioneer. They passed the legislation. They tried to break the silos, the organizational silos, but still, even there, they have problems. It's easier when you have organization on a level on region, like Ita Italy. In Greece, it's even more difficult because you have a national structure for the NHS and the regional structure for the cities. And this doesn't match. So in Greece, it's even difficult, more difficult. But there is no solved problem, unfortunately. Yes. So my question would be, um, we have also a lot of EU projects in the European Union, and I heard from our, uh, in, in Germany for example, from our medical um, sector, that there is a plan to have a smart sort of data or health data vault where um, we get a European standard. Yes. And the thing is, if everybody is already working on certain you know, areas, why don't we have a European standard then for these kind of, because you also just said there are a lot of, you know, sort of um, applications out there, devices, why don't we have a certain kind of standard yes. that we can really apply this for all the European countries? That was one of the big disadvantages in the EU and the, thanks to this uh, acknowledge of the problem, as you mentioned, it was announced the European Health Data Space uh, yeah. last year, and uh, there, this uh, now it's already running till end till January. There is the deadline for two calls: uh, European Health Data Space One and European Health Data Space Two, and there are it's called direct grants if you Google it. And uh, every every Ministry of Health and Ministry of uh, Technology in uh, in uh, across the EU are now have meetings with the Commission with this open call and they're going to be direct grant to, to produce a bridge with the health vaults of the Greek NHS, for example, to the central one and it's going to be the European health data space in the next two or three years and the, the funding is more than half a billion euros. So already it's running till uh, January. There is a deadline yeah. per country. So, yeah. uh, but the, still we're behind US, but 
at least we, we, we figured out that it's a problem. So <laughs> EU is always slower. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else from the floor? Well, mine is not a question, but just a, a funny example of cooperation between local government and healthcare. Um, many of you know we had a colleague, we, we had a colleague, the CIO the, of the, C, the municipality of Tel Aviv. Uh, she left the municipality. She was a member of Major City Zoo, and now she works as innovation manager for the major um, healthcare system in Israel. So it, it, uh, uh, I, I have invited her here. She couldn't come, but uh, the reality, I'm very curious to understand how the technology that she has implemented in the city can be transferred or integrated with the technology. So I have no answer. I was just curious to know that. Yeah. I'm also the, the first innovation manager, <laughs> a health professional in the region. So it was a new structure we, we funded with structural funds. And my term in office started last month. It's my second job this month. After the university hospital, I go there till 5 o'clock. And uh, I'm the first uh, medical innovation manager of the region, first to be. <laughs> so I, 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 I made the job description myself. So <laughs> you can see that it's a very very interesting field, very challenging, but I have the luxury to work on something that is very innovative, but you, all these people I have met across the EU, they have a special personality, they have multiple background. This, if you want to recruit such a person, my advice is that look for double uh, multidiscipline. Uh, they must be a doctor and, and technician, or a manager and technician, never one degree. Otherwise, it's, the personality has to be out of the box. So my colleagues all the time ask me, why don't you open private practice to make money, and you only get a salary? I, that's always, <laughs> this is what I, when I was a medical conference, they always make me, I have the, the, the cheapest car, <laughs> but this is the, this is the, the innovation uh, field. So it's, uh, you need personalities that are not the average doctor or the average manager or the average uh, technical guy. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any more questions from the floor? Because otherwise, I think, thank you so much, Mr. Dafoulis, for this interesting, yeah, we have, okay, we have one more. V one more we can take before we have to break. Uh, I don't know if you know, there is, uh, at least in Israel, uh, most of the cities are uh, members in an organization called healthy cities. Do you know uh, similar organizations in Europe? Maybe there are, but I don't know the names. But there is net, there are networks built by the there are networks built by the Commission, the European Digital Health Initiatives. They call it a DIX. They are going to be started. And they will try to connect all of us, but it's already starting. So I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think I have such a. Very close to many uh, local municipalities, and uh, they pay a lot of attention for health education from kindergarten up all over the levels of the schools, whether uh, better food or to drink water or things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this is part of, uh, I think, of what you were talking about, uh, health and society. Yes. Because society means all communities. Yes, not yes. Not just the patient that uh, suffer from this disease or not. Yeah. Health in all policies, they call it the EU agenda, but it's still theoretical in Europe. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Dafulas, again. This was really interesting. And this is an interesting field to watch, yes. for sure.